Kitco Mining Special Coverage of BMO's 33rd Global Metals Mining and Critical Minerals Conference is brought to you by First Majestic Silver. Goose is getting ready to fly. This is Paul Harris with Kitco Mining at the BMO Metals Mining and Critical Minerals Conference in Hollywood, Florida. Joining me today is Clive Johnson, President and CEO of B2 Gold. Clive, welcome back to Kitco. Hi, Paul. Good to see you. Likewise. Now, B2 Gold last year, 2023, you achieved your guidance with production of 994,000 ounces of gold uh, from your own operations. Congratulations there. Um, a lot of your peers are not performing well. B2 Gold has consistently performed well. Mm -hmm. well what's going on, do you think? Well, I would say I can only really speak for, for our experiences. We've had, uh, that's the eighth year in a row that we've met our guidance, which is quite an accomplishment through COVID and everything we've been through in the last eight years. That's eight years in a row of, of beating our meeting or beating our guidance for production and our cost guidance <coughs> as well. So we're very proud of that track record. I'm, I'm, I think that overall inflation's obviously had an impact on our industry. Unfortunately, though, we've seen since, since the start of this new year, We've seen a number of companies come out with, with some disappointing numbers, I think, that have rattled shareholders a bit about the gold space. So there's a bit of a disconnect, it appears, between the gold price, which is pretty robust where it is today at over $2,000 an ounce, and the gold equities. So we haven't really got the buying attention we would have thought. Now, partly, it's because some companies and some of the bigger ones, unfortunately, have had to come up with disappointing results and how to reguide. So in our particular case, uh, this is a central industry, so we had a great year last year, we'll, and uh, this year is more of a year where we are growing by building the Goose Mine. We're also doing some projects in Mali that are one-off, building a telling uh, facilities which you need, building exp expanding the solar plant. So we're spending a lot of money this year, frankly. Uh, this won't be as robust a cash flow year as we had last year, but we'll get through this year. Our production should set records next year, 1.2 to 1.3 million ounces next year, and our costs should come back down to the levels that we're used to. So this year is a bit of an anomaly of a little less production because we didn't get the permit in time from the government of Mali. We didn't get a permit in time to start trucking ore to the Fukuoka mill. So that should have added 80 to 100,000 ounces this year, which would have filled, kept us near that million ounce level. So uh, we're working on that. We'll make progress on that. But this year is the year to focus on what we're doing. We're extremely well financed, extremely strong financial position, which is where you want to be. Back to next year, we get back into some very impressive cash flows as we're used to and the kind of performance that, that we do. A good year, a good solid year for B2 last year, but your all-in sustaining costs rose to $1,199 per ounce. Yeah. Um, that's, I think, the highest it's ever been, pretty much. Mm -hmm. um, is the company in danger of losing its low ASIC position? Because for, for many, many years, you've been a standout for being yeah. one of the lowest ASIC producers amongst the big companies. Yeah, well, I think that's a, a, a fair question. I, I think that this year is an anomaly, as I said. This is a year, and in the cycle of mining, you'll have years where you have a bit lower grade, or you have more stripping to do, or you have capital to spend. In the case of Goose, of course, the capital is to build a new mine. So we expect to get back down to lower all sustaining costs next year. This is an anomaly, and frankly, our all sustaining costs probably should have been similar to last year if we'd got the additional approval from the government of Mali to start hauling ore down. So we're very cost conscious. Uh, obviously, inflation has had a factor for everyone, but at the end of the day, I still see looking forward. I still see us as a low, as a compared to the industry, as uh, back in that low all sustaining cost position. Okay. Now, B2 is, I would say, very well known for being a shrewd exponent of uh, M&A. We've done some great deals over the years. We've built the company up to this million ounce a year level. Um, it would seem to be a buyer's market now. You mentioned the divergence between the gold price and equity prices. Right. Uh, I imagine you see uh, quite a lot of potentially interested things out there. It surprises me there's been so little M&A action. What's your view on what's happening and what's potentially impeding deal fellows? Well, I think for us, for, for us, first specifically for us, th this is not a time where we're looking to add on in terms of new projects. At the end of the day, we have the expansion of Fercola we talked about, that hopefully by next year or sooner we'll be trucking ore at Fercola, which will increase production, as I said, by about 100,000 ounces. We have the Goose project coming online in the first quarter of 2025, which should produce 300,000 ounces um, a year, and we'll come up with detailed costs, but we're expecting to be around uh, $1,000 or $1,100 an ounce, all in sustaining costs there. We'll have more on that to come out. And then we have, so that gives us uh, the potential for record production next year, as I said, 1.2 to 1.3 .3 million ounces. Um, so we're not getting value for what we're doing today. We're not getting value for Goose. I think this is a tough market we're in right now. So a lot of people are, even with our success track record of building mines around the world, including in the north of Russia, we're doing one in northern Canada, 
even with our credibility, it's a tough market right now. People are well, a bit of a wait and see mode, but we're not gonna jump into M&A because our stock price is so low, frankly. At the end of the day, we have growth in the portfolio. So not only do we have the expansion of Focola, the goose mine coming on, but we think the next one may very well be Gramalate in Colombia, where we recently bought on our partner, Anglo Golashanti. So now we can look at it for the first time as one company owning the asset, not two. We were always pushing for a higher tonnage beer and gold production of that project. It's probably better suited as a smaller project, maybe 150 or 200,000 ounces a year, but in the right place in Colombia, we had a permit before for Gamalate, we'll have to apply for a different permit, but it'll be a smaller footprint, a much smaller mill, higher grade, um, the cost should be lower. Uh, on, on the big, big issue, there was a capital cost estimated at $900 million. So we decided not to go ahead. So did AGI, we bought them out. Now we own 100%. So is there a smaller mine there? So that study will be out by the middle of the year. So if you look at that potential, we've got to do the study, but if we're right, and it's gonna make sense, between Goose and potentially Gamalachi, you could be adding 450 to 500,000 ounces to this company. So uh, we see a lot of potential. We love our exploration upside. This is not the time for us to go and take on another project to build. I've always said for 35 years, we'll never build two mills at the same time. We have a great construction team. The key for us, as always, is focus. Goose is the focus. Gramalache could be the next one. And let's get some credit in the market for the assets we already have. One of the things I hear a lot is that there's not a lot of money available for the exploration stage. Um, the juniors are struggling. B2, you've been investing, you have invested in some juniors, you've invested in slow line gold, matador mining, uh, and in a joint venture in Finland. What's the company's strategy uh, behind these kind of investments and what potentially do you want them to lead to? Sure, well, definitely, uh, obviously, it's very difficult for exploration companies to raise money, even with this robust gold price that we have, you know, relatively speaking, historically speaking. So we see an opportunity there. We're very much interested in making major discoveries in our own right, which we've done historically at Beam and B2 Gold. But reaching out to good junior companies that have good management and really good exploration prospects, we can help them, obviously, by putting money in the treasury. We can also help them, with, frankly, with credibility, because B2 Gold is a well-known producer, builder, et cetera, but also a very good exploration company, because we were born of exploration, Beam and B2 Gold, back in the day. So we see it as a great opportunity to, um, to get involved in the projects. Now, down at the end of the day, is Snowline going to want to build a mine? We don't know, but they want to build value for their shareholders, which they're doing a great job of. And one day in the future, if they are looking to be a friendly takeover, then that's what B2 Gold has done, as you know, many, many times. So we're just a good, um, friendly shareholder. We like what they're doing, and we're very positive. It's, a, it's, a, it's definitely a world-class discovery they have in the Yukon, where I started my career some 40-odd years ago. So. We're back in Canada with the Goose Project. We'd like to do more in Canada. But we're also looking around the world at juniors. So either, either signing deals with juniors where we can earn a majority interest by spending money in the ground or things like this, investing in them. So I see that as an important part of our growth portfolio, but we still are going to do our own exploration. This year's budget, 65 million US for exploration. 28 million for that is Goose. We're so excited about the exploration upside there, but there are other projects around the world as well. So the strategy, when I say we're not interested in M&A, I mean that more in the fact of a, uh, sort of a corporate takeover of someone, unless the valuations made sense to us. At this goal, with our stock where it is today, we're more likely to focus on exploration, development of our own projects and the juniors. What are your aims in Finland? Again, in Finland, you've got that sort of northern Arctic uh, kind of environment yeah. to develop in, which, where you've got a lot of experience, similar perhaps to some of the things you're going through with Goose. Uh, what's your strategy there? Well, it's an exploration project. We've had some sniffs. We haven't really hit it out of the park uh, yet. We're, we're, we have ground that is next to Rupert Resources, who have a very good deposit there. Um, and at the end of the day, we're back, in, back drilling soon there. And uh, I think this will be an important year to see if we get the results we're looking for. There's multiple targets. We've had some success, but we haven't found a multi-million ounce deposit yet that would, 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 would want us to continue to develop. But we've got a good exploration program coming up. Okay. I'd like to broaden our M&A discussion, if I may, Clive. Uh, the recent years have seen some mega deals in the space. Uh, to by and large, the performance has been, of the bigger companies has been disappointing. So does that beg the question, is the sector creating companies that are too big to succeed? I think that's a really good question, you know, uh, the good point. I, I do, from myself, one of the, the biggest challenges in this industry is to maintain your production level and then grow it uh, as well. So to maintain your production level, you've got to find more ounces of gold. So for me, uh, there's, a, there's somewhat of a limiting point there where I, I think there's a space for a company like a B2 Gold between maybe 1 million ounces and 3 million ounces a year, and we will continue to grow. 
in that space because you could be light on your feet. You could still be a small company. You could be you know, light on your feet. And we can continue to do our international adventure, uh, including North America now again. But I think, I think um, there's a certain point in time where it's going to be tough. If you're really big, that's a hell of a challenge to replace five, eight million ounces of gold a year. It's a challenge. It's doable, but it's really challenging. I, I, I think there's a space for investors to do very well with smaller producers, and we pay a six percent yield dividend. We pay the highest dividend of any gold company in the of any gold company. At the end of the day, and we'll continue to pay that dividend. So, I think there's, I think there's bigger upside with companies that are personally that are smaller producers because of the growth we have in our portfolio, but also that space and where we can continue to be an entrepreneurial company, which is really the key to our success. Do what we do well, deliver the promises we make, but always be entrepreneurial. And that makes us a little different than some of the other producers out there. Now. Another trend we've seen in recent years, as well, presumably as part of the uh, attempt to appeal to generous investors, yeah. the bigger companies have been giving five and 10 year production and, and cost guidance. We're in a cyclical business. So does that, does that give investors the opportunity to, let's say, better time their investments? They can say, look, Clive, we like what you're doing now. We can yep. see you, you can have production uptick in a couple of years time. We love you, but we're not going to invest in you today. Our moment to invest is going to be in two years time. Yeah. Which it's great in two years' time, but it doesn't really help you today. Yeah, I, I understand that. I understand some of the logic of that. At the end of the day, though, I think you have to look at, at, at things change a lot. So if you come up with five-year guidance, fine. But look at what we've done. So 15 years ago, we had no gold production. Now we're just under a million ounces of gold a year from the projects we've successfully acquired and developed. So what are we going to do in the next five years? Well, we're going to build the goose mine. Perhaps if we get the right results economically from the study of Gramolazzi, we may build that one. And then what else do we do? We're not a company that's going to stand still for very long. We never have. We're a growth company, as well as being a really good, a good producer. So I, I think that's part of the problem with five or 10 year guidance is for many companies, maybe they're going to be static for five years or maybe they're going to drop a bit one year and increase the next year. The part of our job is to, make, is to find more ounces to replace, but in our case, to grow the company as well. So you know, I, I think that at the end of the day, investors make their own assessment. Right now, there's a lot of negativity, frankly, around here. And part of that's because uh, a lot of companies have had to change their guidance. We had to change our guidance a bit by increasing the capital budget for the Goose project. Um, but I think we're going to be on that budget. So this is a, there's a, a negative sentiment around the market today because the gold price is so strong and the gold equities haven't performed. But it can become a self-fulfilling prophecy. If people sit on their hands <laughs> you know, too long here at the end of the day, you know, this, this, where's the value creation? So we just got to keep doing what we're doing and we'll be fine at the end of the day. I want to finish today uh, talking a little bit more about your, your project specifically. You mentioned the, the cost increase that you had to announce at Goose. Uh, why was that? Was that just the, the overall inflation that's hitting everybody, changing scope, optimization? Yeah, when we did our due diligence last year, we actually came up with a higher estimate. Sabina, the company we took over, they did a very good job of permitting and expiration, and they started down the road of, the road of ordering equipment and construction. But we, we factored in uh, inflation at that time. We did a lot of due diligence like we always do, on our projects before, but this is not the typical b 2 model. Typically, we would like to acquire a company that's done a feasibility study if we could do an accretive deal, and then we plan the mill, we build it, we order what we want, and we build it ourselves. In this case, we inherited a situation with a contract miner who was going to, or a contractor who was going to build the mine, which we don't do, we do it ourselves because we do it so well. So we had to make a lot of changes, and frankly, there were some costs that uh, in, in the process of due diligence, we didn't get, uh, we, we had to re cost things such as labor and other things. And in the feasibility study, we're a little optimistic as it turns out. So that's the reason um, I don't like it. We, don't, we, we pride ourselves on delivering the promises we make. So it's disappointing for us to have to increase the capital. This is a great project. It's gonna be a very good mine. Tremendous exploration upside. We have $28 million budget this year for goose exploration. We like it a lot. I like the acquisition. And I believe the ice road started a couple of days ago to haul everything into site. I believe we're gonna be on, on track for that start of gold production in the first quarter of 2025. Is it tough taking over somebody else's field, Clive? Well, it, 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 there's benefits in the sense of Sabina did a great job. So that's the, that's the key element here. They did a very good job of permitting. They were, they were a company that was a single asset company in what, what actually is a pretty difficult market. So I think for them, financing was gonna be expensive for a junior single asset company. And also they had a very, very tight budget. So we get to bring our technical expertise and they've got some very good people who have stayed with the project. We get to combine with them on the technical side and lots of other, the great job they've done in Inuit relations, et cetera. But at the end of the day, um, we combine the forces to do that. And um, I think that 
Sure, and in the perfect world, we would have taken them over after they finished their feasibility study, not after they started the construction. But that is what it is. Great asset. I stand by, definitely stand by the acquisition. It's going to be a good asset for a long time for, for B2O shareholders. Okay. In your conference call, uh, your 2023 results conference call uh, a week or so ago, um, when referring to Fecola in Mali, you said that trucking the gold oxide ore from the Anaconda deposit, that looks to be the optimal scenario as it avoids a, a costly new mill development. What are the, the potential impacts on, on that particular plan or approach, given the, the attacks earlier this month on a bus carrying some of your workers? Yeah, tragically, we had some fatalities when one of our, our bus convoy was attacked. We don't, and then and obviously we send our condolences to those, the families of those that passed, and we're doing everything we can to help those families and also the, the injured uh, in their recovery. At the end of the day, we really are doing an investigation with the government today. We don't really understand right now the motivation for the attack um, and um, how it happened and why. So that's an investigation that's ongoing. I must say that this is, well, this is 300 kilometers from Fakola on the road to Bamako. That's the national highway in the country. Now, there's a forested area there, heavily forested area, where there's been some banditry in the past because they can, well, there's, there's a heavily forested area that can be concealed. At the end of the day, we're talking to the government about what happened. Are there ways to improve the security on the road? But this is a very, this is the main highway in the country. And there's, there's dozens of buses going up and down that road every day. Um, but our commitment is to our safety of, of our people, as it always is. We'll work with the government to be safer. But I must say, over, overall, generally, in the last six or nine months, we've seen some improvement in security around the part of Mali that we're in. This is the key part for all the gold mines. There's eight gold mines along the belt. And the government knows that, like us, they want to keep their citizens safe. And we want to keep our 3,000 Malian employees safe. So we'll continue to work on that. But it doesn't, doesn't the mine is um, continuing to run. Uh, the Fakola mine, it doesn't change any of our plans. We're just going to take this very seriously and see what we can do to improve security. Uh, in, in the, our, mine, our mine security is fantastic. We're one of the safest mining companies in the world. We need to continue to do that everywhere, including the, the highways and the roads that we work on. Okay, Clyde, uh, finally today, you've got a lot of projects on the way. Uh, where do you want B2 Gold to be at the end of the year? At the end of the year? Well, by the end of the year, we will be uh, completing construction of the mill at, at uh, the Goose for that first quarter 2025 startup. We expect to have a permit from the government of Mali to start trucking ore. As we said, we're waiting for an exploitation permit. We're all ready to go. We built the road, so that could add another 100,000 ounces approximately a year. Uh, and we'll be more advanced on the Grand Malate project. We will have done a study by the middle of the year to tell us if Grand Malate is economic as a smaller mine and if it's big enough for B2 Gold as an asset. So a lot of exploration results. We're spending a lot of money at Goose. Uh, we're very excited. Our exploration geologist, I haven't seen them this excited since Fakola or even Kupel back in the day, the Russian days. Uh, there's great exploration upside there and elsewhere. So we'll, be, uh, we'll move along significantly our plan to get back to 2025, the kind of production levels and costs that we're used to seeing uh, from B2 Gold. And I wish you the best of luck with that, Clive. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thanks, Paul. Always a pleasure. And this is Paul Harris of Kitco Mining, the BMO Metals Mining and Critical Minerals event in Hollywood, Florida. If you like what you see, don't forget to subscribe. Kitco Mining special coverage of BMO's 33rd Global Metals Mining and Critical Minerals Conference is brought to you by First Majestic Silver.